Hey guys, it's LEGO Boy Z3. This is my complete guide to notation on the 3x3. So today is just going to be a basic run through of notation on the 3x3. So basically I'm going to go through all the different ways that I know of of notating different moves on a 3x3, like doing face moves, wide moves, rotations, or even slice moves. I just realized that there's a lot of confusing information out there, like what move is this, an M or an M prime? Or which way do you do a Z rotation, like this or this or this? So I hope to cover all of that today, and I also want to tell you guys what kind of moves are officially recognized, like by the WCA, so that you could use those moves during an FMC solve, because there are actually some pretty common moves that are not actually allowed during FMC. Okay, so first off, pretty much everyone watching this video will know the basic notation for face moves. So we have six faces of the cube, and each one has a letter assigned to it to turn that particular side. So there's R for right, L for left, U for up, D for down, F for front and B for back. And so when you just see a single uppercase letter alone like that during an algorithm, that would mean turn that side clockwise. So for example, R means turn the right side clockwise like this, U is clockwise like this, and B, you kind of have to turn the cube around to make sure you're doing it the right way, is clockwise like this. Now if you look after the letter and it has a little symbol next to it that looks like an apostrophe, that means prime. So instead of turning the face 90 degrees clockwise, you turn it 90 degrees counterclockwise. So this would be F prime, this would be L prime, and this would be D prime. Then if you wanted to do a double turn, moving the face 180 degrees, you just put the number two after the uppercase letter. So for example, an L2 would be like this, U2 would be like this, and F2 would be like this. Now of course, it doesn't actually matter which direction you're turning the side during a double move. So for example, you could do a U2 like this clockwise, or you could do the exact same thing counterclockwise like this, and it would still produce the exact same result. Now unofficially, there are some people who will put a prime next to a double move to notate that you're supposed to be doing that move counterclockwise. This comes up a lot in speed cubing, like when you have an algorithm where the fastest way to do that double move is to do it counterclockwise, like this. So in that case, people will write R2 prime. Now because this is not a move that's officially recognized by the WCA, instead of writing R2 prime, you just have to write R2. If you try and do it in some sort of FMC attempt, it will not count. So try and stay away from this kind of unofficial notation when it comes to official WCA rules. Now next up here are wide moves. Now these are officially recognized by the WCA as long as you notate them correctly. And basically what it is, is instead of just turning one layer like this, you also turn the adjacent slice layer right next to it. So for example, instead of doing an R, you also turn the layer next to the R just like this. And this is notated just using a lowercase w right after the letter that shows what face it is. So for example, if you wanted to have a wide turn on the U face, you would have U and then a lowercase w. And that would mean instead of just turning U like this, you also turn the layer right next to it like this. So that would be UW, you could also have like LW like this, and then you can also have primes and uh, double moves and things like that. So for example, RW prime would be like this, BW prime would be like this, you could have uh, DW2 like this, or FW2 like this. Now unofficially, there are some places that'll indicate wide moves a little bit differently from the WCA notation. So instead of using the W, what they'll do is they'll just take the letter of the move and make it lowercase. So for example, if you were to just see like a lowercase r during an algorithm, that probably means do a wide turn on the right face. You can also have things like primes and double moves, of course, you can have like a lowercase u prime, which is like that, or lowercase d, Two. All of that would be unofficial. Now another type of move that a lot of people think works officially but actually does not is the slice move. And so basically what a slice move is, is instead of turning a single layer on the outside of a cube, you're turning one layer on the inside of a cube, like this, or this, or this. And so by far the most common of these moves is the middle layer slice turn, which is notated by the letter M. And the way that you know which way is clockwise and which way is counterclockwise is you look from the left side. And so if you just had like an M move, that means you turn it clockwise looking from the left side. So you kind of follow along as if you were doing an L turn, but instead you do that middle layer turn just like that. And so let's say for example now you had an M prime move. So the biggest mistake that people make is looking from the right side instead of the left. So if you look from the right side, it would be like this counterclockwise, but that's actually not correct. You have to look from the left, counterclockwise would be in this direction. And of course you can also have an M2, which is just a double layer move like this in either direction. And so there are of course two other axes, so two more different types of slice moves that you can do. So first of all, there's the equator layer, which goes along here, and this is notated by the letter E. And this one you follow the U side. So if you had an U move, it would be clockwise like this. So if you had an E move, it would be clockwise like this. E prime would be the other way, like this. Now the other slice move is the standing layer, which is the layer that goes around here, and this is notated by an S for standing. So for this layer, you follow the front face. So an S move would look like this, S2 would look like this, and an S prime would look like this. 
But again, none of these slice moves are defined or recognized officially, so don't try and use them during something like an FMC solve. Anyway, now we're going to be moving on to cube rotation. So there's actually two different ways to notate cube rotations, and they both are officially recognized by the WCA. The first way is less common, but definitely a lot simpler. And basically what you're going to be doing is using a standard move like a U or an R prime to define which way you want to rotate the cube. So for example, if you wanted to rotate the cube like this, that would be just like you were doing a U move, except instead of just turning the U side, you're just turning the whole cube like this. And similarly, if you wanted to do a rotation like this, that would be just like doing an R prime move. You can kind of imagine doing the R prime move, but instead just turning the entire cube. And so the way that you use this type of notation is you use a lowercase letter and you put it in square brackets. And so for example, you could have an L prime, which is lowercase and in brackets, and that would mean turning the cube, rotating it like this. You could also, for example, have lowercase f2 in square brackets, which would mean rotating the cube like this, as if you were doing an f turn, or you could have maybe lowercase d prime in brackets, which would be just like this. Now again, that notation does work officially as long as your letters are lowercase and they're in square brackets. Now there is a more common way of doing rotations, which is a little bit more complicated to remember, but it's what most people use. So basically you have three different lowercase letters for the three different axes, and each of those follows a particular side. So the X rotation is like doing a rotation like this, and it follows the right side. And so you wanna look at the right side, and so if you had like an X prime, it would be like doing an R prime move, like that. Now you also have the Y rotation, which follows the U side. So if you wanted to do a Y move, you turn the cube just like this, clockwise following the U side. Now there's also the Z rotation, which follows the F side. And so if you wanted to do maybe a Z2, that would be like this, or Z prime would be just like this. So there you go. There are all the different ways of notating the movement of a 3x3 three three as defined by the WCA, as well as some other unofficial ones. Now the WCA has an official metric that's used to define the number of moves done on a cube, and that's called OBTM, or outer block turn metric. And so basically any of these moves that I've shown in this video that weren't labeled unofficial, like an R move or an RW move, anything like that, any outer block turn of the puzzle, whether it's 90 degrees or 180 degrees, that's counted as one turn. And if you do a rotation, like the ones I showed on this list, that's counted as zero turns. So it doesn't matter if you put a rotation in an FMC solve, it doesn't count as anything at all. And so this metric is used for counting things like the number of moves in FMC solves. And so for the world record of 19 moves, you couldn't have done any slice moves because you'd have to have one, two moves to do that using the official notation. And doing a rotation doesn't count as anything. And it's also the reason that this is a plus two, whereas this is not a plus two because it's actually two moves, and so that's just a DNF. So that's pretty much it for this outline of the different types of notation used by the WCA, as well as elsewhere. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you have any questions, be sure and leave them in the comments down below, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!